boxed in and there is no way out you can't go over you can't go under you can't go through you can't go backwards you feel trapped and sometimes the only thing you're praying for is saying i need a breakthrough a miracle in my situation and i'm kind of wondering if you are in that kind of space this morning particularly if you find yourself in business that's one of the places where most of us end up feeling stuck feeling like we don't know where else to go you've tried absolutely everything or maybe you feel like you cannot find the right kind of personnel to help you achieve what you are trying to achieve and if this is anything quite like you and if you are an entrepreneur congratulations welcome to the reality of being in business of trying to be innovative of trying to do something more meaningful every single monday on the crunch we open up our segment with exactly that business talk particularly for somebody who considers themselves an entrepreneur and if you've been following our show i think we've tried very well to try and differentiate between a business person and entrepreneur what it is that makes you cutting edge where you are the only solution where you are the best or you are coming up with the solution that everybody knows that if i don't go because you're doing something right in your product so if you also happen to be one of those people who struggle with um the outcome of your business this show is particularly for you we call this show business pet talk Every single Monday for the next hour, this is exactly what we do. We talk all things business. And what I love is in talking about this, you get to meet some real people who are walking the journey. You also get to meet who I like to call our business coach who takes the time to put these conversations together. And if you also happen to be in business and you might also need help, I'll give you his number a little bit later on. But have you ever noticed when you are in a space, um, you can do this because you can clearly see the difference in terms of mindset and that's what i want to talk about this morning um on a big business pep talk how your mindset is important um, is, is the most important startup capital. If you're an entrepreneur, we want to talk to you this morning. We want to hear from you some of the experiences you've had in business and how your thinking made all the difference in the outcome of what you're trying to do. Business okay, why did that play? When sending or receiving your goods, do you want to experience the most innovative and efficient courier service in Zimbabwe? You can track your goods throughout the transportation process. Guarantee safe delivery of your goods today with our unparalleled overnight rush and on demand and same day delivery services. Get in touch with our business development team on 0713 635 848 or 0783 778 443. Soka, better delivery. Tuchi Manya. So, as we are talking about how your mindset is the most important startup capital you have, we always have guest of the day on our show, and I'll be introducing her to you in a minute. But what I can tell you about her. Not only is she driven, not only is she an enthusiastic young person, she's gone off and set up different initiatives. One that is looking to help particularly women who are trying to start up businesses. To make sure that you have someone holding your hand from you processing your idea, how you can grow that idea and the business actually reaching maturation. Remember the time of COVID-19? Yeah? Even Cyclone died. Many people, especially during the storm of COVID-19, sometimes even inflation in our country, has a huge damaging impact on our business. And often, you can't stand the pressure and you have to shut down. But I think as you know about life, whether it's childbirth, school, 
there's got to be some sort of resilience you are developing in yourself, right? And this is no exception for business. And part of you developing this business is a positive mindset that should help you as an entrepreneur become more adaptable so that you can also pivot in during, during the times that we saw. So in COVID-19 as a business, did you adapt? Did you find yourself changing in any way? And that's why today we're talking about how your mindset is the most important startup capital. And let me introduce our business coach. And I, that's what I love to call him um, because he's playing that role, right? We are He's that guy for us who comes in giving us useful tips to help us figure out how we can be better at businesses. Businesses that we can leave for our future generations, for our children. Help me welcome this morning, put your volume up a little if you can, for Stephen Chikojo. He's the managing director of Urban Create Agency. He's also great with marketing. He's great with advertising. He's also the business development and strategy consultant for Beyond Borders Logistics and Soka International. Did I also mention that he also does some part-time writing? Yeah, you bet. I order which you're reading my newspaper, you actually find him doing a little bit of writing. So I'll give you his social media handles later. But let me start off with you, Stephen, before we get our guest of the week coming in. Good morning and welcome. Morning, Polak. I'm so grateful. What an introduction. <laughs> It's always good having you on, um, coach, if I can call you that. And today yeah. we're talking about something that is so powerful and pivotal to success in business. I think you've gone and given us other tips around this. I said, no tanga no kufunga, no kufunga kwa kuma fungiro, the power of your mindset. Sure. And I would guess things like self belief and possibly even trust in our products, in our services themselves, um, are important when you have a team around you that yeah. is also just as confident in your product. So yeah. my first question to you, Coach, before we even have our guest of the week speaking, how do we build this self-belief in our team? Yeah, I, I think it has to start with you as the leader. Uh, you articulated it so well when you were talking about how important the mindset is and how that becomes your most important startup capital. Mm -hmm. So my, my thinking is that, you know, the leader is the visionary. Uh, the leader is the person that shows the way to go. Uh, that's that demonstrates how to go that way. Mm -hmm. And where you know, even if you have your team, the team is going to look up to you. Mm -hmm. So, if you have a strong mindset, you're going to be resilient. You're going to be a visionary. You're going to have creativity. You're going to take risks. You are going to show direction, generally direction. And, and we have talked about the fact that entrepreneurs, entrepreneurship is not an easy journey. Mm. Uh, in most cases, we have seen through case studies how it is difficult. Sometimes you face setbacks. Sometimes you face difficulties that are beyond your control. Mm. But then what do you do in such circumstances? Do you give up or do you continue? Mm. So I think what's important is that you have that positive mindset mm -hmm. that in the face of adversity you are able to persevere you are able to overcome because with a strong mindset with a strong personality you are able to overcome and achieve anything you would like to achieve so so let's explore this idea yeah. of a positive mindset a little bit more yeah. sometimes it feels like we're always looking for external factors to make things better it could be the ballot box, it could be a friend rescuing you from a situation. We always think solutions to better things is gonna come from outside. Mm -hmm. But as you're talking about you know, positive mindset and even the feeling of self-belief, I find that sometimes when you encourage yourself, it also boosts your yeah. sense of self-worth, even about what you're trying to do in business. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm wondering, um, Stephen, when it comes to being an entrepreneur, what sort of thinking um, will help us concrete that sense of self-worth, which will result in positive thinking? I'd like to start by, you know, referring to one of the greatest motivational speakers in Zimbabwe, Arthur Marara, who wrote a book, <laughs> uh, which, which goes, no one is coming. <laughs> you know, what that, what that shows is you should have self-belief in your to have the team that can help you realize the dream. Yeah. 
It's 9.23 on Capital 100.4 FM. Harare Zabi, welcome to Big Business Pet Talk, the only show that makes sure that we are helping you build, establish businesses that you can leave for your children and their children. This morning is your success. I want to know from you on 7 And if you have been in business, how much of that do you think has made you stay or, or sustain yourself in business this far? 0719-100-404. Um, Stephen, as we're talking about the most important saga capital, which is the mindset, one word that kept coming to me as I was thinking about this conversation was the idea of resilience. Yeah. And as I was trying to find the definition of resilience, because you know, as Zimbabweans, we always hear, ah, as Zimbabweans, we're very resilient. Mm -hmm. And then I looked up the definition of resilience, and this is what came up. Mm -hmm. And the resilience may be defined as the process of adapting well in the midst of adversity. Yeah. Resilience is the strength and the speed of our response to adversity and we can build it. Mm -hmm. It isn't about having a backbone. It's about strengthening the muscles around the backbone. And this was said by a woman called Cheryl Sandberg. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. That it is the muscles that we must strengthen in your body. Yes, I know what I should be. That makes sense. Is to strengthen your muscles, to build resilience, sure. to build strength. So sure. how do we develop this resistance in ourselves so that we can use it to address situations as part of our mindset? Yeah, I, I think the most important thing for Lucky is to understand the environment where we operate in. For any business, there is a certain market that you operate in. Mm -hmm. And that is the most important thing that you should understand. Because if you look, we often talk about, you know, if we look at the top 200 companies in the year 2000, if we, we, we were to go back and look at them now, how many are still, you know, mm. competitive? Mm. So it means the environment keeps changing. You know, there's technological advancements, there's change in economic uh, situations, mm. financial uh, upheavals and things like that. So that change and an understanding of the environment is very important for you mm. because then that's what helps you to be able to figure out how you can overcome the things that you face or your pain points. Mm. Uh, it helps you build a resilient mindset because you know what you face, because you know how possibly you can overcome it. So I would say again and again, know your product, know your market, uh, know your environment, and these are the things that are crucial in making sure that you survive in a highly volatile and turbulent environment. And they help so much in building your resilience and your responses to any challenges or pain points that you may face. It's 9.27 on Capital 100.4 FM, Harada's Heartbeat. We're talking this morning about the most important um, startup capital that you have. And we've said it is the mindset. Do you agree? in your experiences in business. I'm so excited because you're about to meet today's guest of the week right here on Pep Talk. She is young, but age is nothing but her number. Because mm -hmm. as it is, she's gone off and set up initiatives that are really helping women who are in entrepreneurship. She helps them from coming up with the ideas, the growth and even the maturation of the business idea. But that's not all. And I'll be telling you all about her in a second. And you also get to meet her. Let us know also if you do agree that your mindset has been the most important key in you succeeding in your startup. This one is the music of Nyasha David, Iko Oko, Top Top. And here's hoping that in what you are doing, you are seeing yourself right at the top. Are you ready? Okay. I just wanted you to have a feel and just
hot non stop and everybody knows I'm hot. Yeah. hot. of Nyasha David Jikaina Iye So I, I don't know if I'm the only person that feels this way if you're like me put your hand up as well with me right I, I've always felt like there's certain songs and certain musicians where the whole song is about just blowing their ego and their trumpet about, you know, how they have the most cars and the most women and this and that and this and that. And this song is no exception. You know, when you listen to it, it's, it's about him encouraging himself and saying, you know what, I am going to be at the top. It don't even matter what anybody is going to say. And the truth of the matter is that's exactly how we should be living, right? Where you yourself are your biggest valid data. No, 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 no. You got to tell yourself that indeed, and I certainly will be at the top, top. And that's exactly what we're talking about today on Big Business uh, Pep Talk. We are looking at how your mindset is probably the most important startup capital um, in your business. Good morning. Welcome. Pep Talk is brought to you by your business partners, Urban Create Advertising Agency, Beyond Borders Logistics, and Soka International. Talk to us on plus 263-772-409-651. Your success, our commitment. Do you often send or receive goods to and from different places in Zimbabwe? If the answer is yes, then book for most efficient career service with the multi-award winning brand, Soka International. Guarantee quick and safe delivery of your goods today by contacting our business development team on 0713-635-848 or 0783-778-443. Soka. Better delivery. Pochi Maya. Number of kids are buying the cat. If any moon one, do the cook gashits. I may any one for catch. I'm not a cook. Church papi. I'm so sad. The pons. The one from fundi. Sila siri many mama jarao. Do pato. I cook the baya. Pons. Kau ya ba mu ba ya kuz. I ku sek. I ku ku ne ne eri. I do varu ku eko kuku. Mu aka go gara. Mu katar satra. I'm so fundi. Sili ngi ba uya. Jambo zipi ba. It's the kind of the feeling I have this morning, and I hope you're also going to catch up on the fever. We have a guest of the week today, and that's what we do every single Monday. We try to bring real people to our stories, isn't it, Stephen? So that it doesn't feel like, philosophy, like we're in a philosophy class. We need to be practical, and that's exciting that we have a young, trailblazing lady today to give us the practical aspects of having a strong mindset. And, and this is the thing, over the last few weeks, we seemed to subconsciously be gravitating to more men that we were women and we know there are also women who are doing well as far as business is concerned quite like this woman who as i've already told you is not only passionate about helping women in business she herself is a finance and management enthusiast she's also a lover of accounting my wife is also an accountant so i think the gene just slipped through right here she's also the founder she's also the ceo of Shanda, Shanda Initiative, the organization I've been telling you about, that she essentially is working tirelessly to support women entrepreneurs at all stages in business. She's the kind of woman who'll be helping you understand. And I did tell you that is not all that she's up to. And I'll tell you all about her business in a second. But let me start off by welcoming her lovely self, Nicole Rubimbo. Listen to the last name. I know when you hear her last name, you're going to think of somebody else. My name is Nicole Rubimbo Marara. Nicole, good morning and welcome and thank you so much for being here. 
Good morning. Thank you for hosting me. Good morning. I'm so happy. I'm so excited to have you seeing a young lady. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to have you, Nicole. Talk to us a little bit more about what we're talking today about, which is the power of positive thinking. But sometimes a positive mindset can also easily sound like it's arrogance. In your experience, how do you strike the balance between self-belief and overconfidence? All right. So um, self-belief, um, when you're looking at it in the, uh, in the same part that we're looking at someone's mindset, mm -hmm. we're looking at how, how they actually interpret and respond to situations. Mm. That self-belief. And then when you're overconfident, this is when you're overconfident, this is when you're saying you've reached a stage where you're unteachable. Mm. You've gone over and above. Mm -hmm. You are unteachable. Yeah. Marati tre de wuchech m funzano body. Marati tre nyasha. Papu sa zizikai papa. You are unteachable. I love that. And and I I'd imagine in your experience. Um, with Shanda Initiative and the other business I'm going to talk about in a second, I like to keep people hanging. Yeah, I uh, will talk about Remember in a second. But can you also um, describe to us in your journey where you needed to adapt quickly? Because I think you kind of spoke to that when you're describing what self belief is, mm -hmm. being able to see Rudikangwa and make do with that. Mm -hmm. Have you had to adapt quickly in your initiative? Yes, I've had to, especially with Shanda Initiative. So when you start something, you've got your vision, you've got where you're going. But along the way, people that you want to fit in the vision also have where they're going. They want to be helped by your vision, mm -hmm. but it's not exactly in the direction that you're going to. And then you have to adapt. It's not a matter of saying, no, I started this. I wanted to go this way. Mm -hmm. But you've got to accommodate the ladies along the way that we're dealing with. We, um, we deal with entrepreneurs at different levels. Mm -hmm. So I had to adapt very quickly mm -hmm. on that note. I love that. And particularly earlier on in your relationship with Mara, walk us through what you felt are the qualities of a resilient person. I think all of us being Zimbabwean, we've often heard, ah, I'm a Zimbabwean, mm -hmm. we are resilient. And for the longest time, I sort of shrugged that off because I feel like it's, it can't be a compliment to always be the person who's just over resilient in life, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think are some of those qualities for somebody who is business, particularly when you're starting up, that make you a resilient person? All right. So earlier on, I talked about how you respond um, to a situation. Let me um, give this maybe story tell. Mm -hmm. Like the person who um, notices this, the situation or the opportunity is Ruta. Remember, mm. we, we had we had Ruta. Yeah. There are people who bought houses with that opportunity with that we didn't know about road they were there before so that's that's real resilience in business yeah an entrepreneur rising up that person the people who bought cars the people who made a living some lives were changed from road i love that mm -hmm. and i'm just thinking as we we're talking um and we kind of spoke a little bit about this yeah. um in the past yeah. even the idea of failure being part of the journey of an entrepreneur who mm -hmm. konewa probably equally as important as the wins talk to us about how you might have had um success coming from the failures you've had in your businesses all right so um for shanda initiative we would have like workshops where we where we have a speaker um a guest speaker coming through and you advertise and maybe you expect 40 people to come through, maybe just two come through, mm -hmm. and you've invested money in paying for the venue, you've invested money in getting those flyers done, that's that's failure, and then you would have to make sure you make the best out of the two people that would have come, mm -hmm. and from those two people, you'd see the next workshop on host, 40 people would come through, and yeah, that's how I maneuvered failure in, in the situations that I met. Uh, 0719104404. Is there anybody who is agreeing with that? An event that you're putting up together mm -hmm. and the turnout is not what you thought. Ah, that one is a difficult place. As an entrepreneur, there are things that you, maybe it's a product that you put out, Stephen. Mm -hmm. You have a target and say, this now is our killer product. It's going to sell well. Mm -hmm. And the market does not respond. Yeah. I think I, I, I like to, we, we hosted Mr. Mugaga, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's about two weeks ago yes. when he was talking about the fact that sometimes you come up with a big innovation or a good product 
but maybe the market is not ready for it. Mm -hmm. So I think as entrepreneurs, when we talk about a strong mindset, we have to understand that failure is part of the game. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand how to handle failure and to take lessons from it. Mm -hmm. Because it is from the experiences that we have. Some people say experience is the greatest teacher. Mm -hmm. So I think the experiences that we, 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 we encounter as entrepreneurs should teach us, mm -hmm. should allow us to think even better going forward to say, if I were to face this problem again, how would I, you know, overcome it? Yeah. And, and not only to think from the perspective of you as a leader of an organization, think about the products that you make, think about the services that you make. Sometimes they also do not deliver the results that the customers really want. Yeah. And again, that's some form of failure. And and I think for any business, we have always said that as long as there is a market, that's what determines the sustainability of a business. So it's always good to be on point, thinking about how you can do continuous improvement, how you can continue to improve your systems, your operations, your products, so that you remain relevant and you don't fall by the wayside as the technological changes, environment, economic upheavals come to confront you. We are talking yeah. to you today as somebody who is an entrepreneur who is into business and the moments where you felt like giving up, the moments you felt like this is not work, that you have been pumping money into this idea and nothing seems to work. Yeah. Did you give up or you kept going? We want to know what was it in your mind and your thinking that made it easier for you to keep going. We are hearing from Miss Nicole Marada this morning as she is a CEO herself. Um, of uh, um, an organization that helps women in entrepreneurship. And I also told you there's something else that I love about Ms. Rubimbo. She also has a brand that stands for integrity, strength, and community, but mainly because this brand went and set out to have a hair product line for women like myself, you know, women with thick hair, African women. And so you have shampoos, you have conditioners, shea butter, castor oil, many products that are good for us in our hair. Now, I'd imagine even with Rubimbo, um, Nicole, there were also challenges that you faced there. Tell us about what keeps you motivated and focused on your goals. Yeah, true. Yeah? So, um, I would say entrepreneurship is not just a title that you post on your social media platforms, you, you tell people about it's a life you lead. It's every day, it's every moment of your life, it counts. Um, you're a moving brand and every time you have to take it to the next level. So Rimbo also helps with like career and personal development. Mm -hmm. And um, building it up was, um, wasn't was very difficult for me because mm -hmm. it's something I'm passionate about. So it, for building it, it was easy. But then establishing it, they, you come, because when you're an entrepreneur, you're looking at um, solutions that people need. So the first step is you tell people, you know what, I'm able to do this. And maybe someone, no one believes you can do it. Mm -hmm. And you've got to live the life. And sometimes you have to cut costs. Sometimes you have to, to actually go the voluntary way so that people get familiar with your product. They build faith in your product. Yeah. Mm, I love this. Mm -hmm. How old did you say you were again? 25. What, 25? I, I don't think I was there at 25. <laughs> I'm so surprised. That's the comment that I'm talking to us today. And I'm sure you can just hear it in her voice and her thought process, the clarity that is in her thinking um, about what she wants to do. And, and I'm guessing, again, Stephen, this is a thought that keeps coming up, how the power of clarity is so important in us being successful entrepreneurs. Definitely. Uh, uh, the, the clarity shows your clear vision as to what you want to achieve. You have to be smart. There are many times when we hear this word smart, specific, are measurable, you Attainable. know, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it just defines how clarity is important. And, and as long as you follow that path, I think not only are your employees able to understand you, your partners will also be able to understand you, even the customers that eventually uh, buy your product and your service will be able to understand where you are going. Because people always say that money follows vision mm. money follows vision it's not the other way around where you have money then the vision follows money mm. but 
It's actually money follows vision. So if you have clarity in vision, you are assured that money will follow. Wow. Yeah. So that is the question of the moment, isn't it? Yeah. How clear are you about your vision? Business Pep Talk was brought to you by your business partners, Urban Create Advertising Agency, Beyond Borders Logistics, and Soka International. Talk to us on plus 263-772-409-651. Your success, our commitment. Business Pep Talk. So as we are working towards our conversation and almost at the end of our hour, we are, you know, trying to connect dots in how your mindset. And, and I wanted to ask of, of Nicole, um, if you can describe to us at any point in your journey um, as an entrepreneur, as a young person that's passionate, who clearly is enthusiastic and clear minded about what it is that you are trying to do. Were there any times in your journey where you needed to, um, I think you kind of answered this question again, but I, I, I'm looking for you to give us a practical example, when did you have to adapt quickly in your business as a leader? And you had to quickly adapt quickly uh, and um, innovate. All right. Um, so maybe I'll answer this using the Rainbow brand. So I talked about me doing um, career and personal development. Mm -hmm. I help people with CVs and cover letters and the like. So you, you, when you start, you've got your starting time and your ending time. Yeah, it's my business. I start at six. I, I, I finish at six. But there are times I had to adapt. You'd have someone say, all right, this is needed by tomorrow morning. I need you to help me draft this. Maybe it's late in the night. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would love to emphasize on how your mindset should always know that the customer is king as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know there's a lot of arguments that come up and um, entrepreneurs now also have their rights. They are stressed up and, and, and you know, but well, sometimes money doesn't look at all that. Yeah, do you want to serve people? You've brought up a solution. You've you've got a service that people need, and this person is saying, you know, I I need my cover letter drafted by tomorrow morning. I, I can't tell them I'm closed. No, I had to adapt. I've got to wake up. I've got to sit on my laptop and get working. Yeah, and, and you know, as you're saying that, it's funny how it's small things like that change the ex customer experience. Mm -hmm. Them wanting to come back, them wanting mm -hmm. to invest more in your business because of little nuances quite like that. This was also pretty ukakavatana. Never think. Nyango ari wrong. Unu shay otish. Unu vamu ane piko ruto kaka wada na nini? Inu ruto ruto nora. Iya ruto ruto pisa wani. Aish. Inu inu ruto ruto nora. Unu kuna aso aso. And you and you keep it moving. Still, I would want yeah. to add on that. People don't buy your products. They don't buy your services. They buy your attitude, your personality. That's what they're looking at. Mm. Customer experience. They, they don't They don't buy the nice logo. They're not attracted by that. Once you treat one person wrong, they'll go and tell their mother. Their mother will tell their grandmother. And it goes on like that. And like, ah, business is low. Why is it people don't buy from me? Sometimes self-introspect as an entrepreneur. It's part of your mindset. Look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself questions. <laughs> Love that. And the manga Oh, I love that. Yeah. I think I think yeah, what she's saying is very important. There was a time when selling was so popular. You know, you have salespeople, they they sell a product. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the trends that have come, you know, with the interactivity uh, of your digital uh, platforms and the like, now customers have got many platforms to say what they want to say. And they have a way of giving feedback and also making sure that they connect to your business. Mm -hmm. So what is important now is relationship building. It is important that you connect with your customers, with your clients. Like she was saying, they buy what they believe, you know, identifies them with you. It is important then that you espouse those values that are important, that resonate with your customers, be it you are servicing them or giving them a product. And in the end, when that connection is there, when that resonance is there, you'll find that strong relationships are built and you have 
clients that continue coming back. Because remember, we always talk about the client lifetime value as well, mm -hmm. where you want the client to buy again and again from you, not just to buy once and they go. That doesn't give you profitability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Buy okay. once and they go. So as we are talking this morning and you're reflecting at your own business, what is your customer retention like? Do you have a high turnover of people who come through your shop? Ungawa shenge sa nubi, mazai huku, vanu vanga ni, vanu vanu ramba bachu ya chisa marum business, vanu ramba bachu ya, vanga ni vatsha marukuwe. That's got to be something you may need to reflect on. Ah, here's another song, self belief, as it were. This one is Shashal and Holy Ten Kapujina. delicate balance between kakujuda kakuta kwekaka ni muna sinka zizisi kise shatara rovimbo otherwise nobody's going to buy from you right your business will not be something that i want or anyone else wants to invest in. who wants to buy from someone or interact or do business with somebody who just seems to know it all but also more importantly how is your thinking setting you apart in your business venture my chadam zuko pa basa. Munungu onana mafungiru ya munu kutu apapa ka pacha ita mranu gadrisa. Uya gadrisi. And so you want to be a problem solver at work. And you cannot be a problem solver if your mindset is not particularly great. And if you are part of an entrepreneurial um, exercise or enterprise, you can expect the problems. Challenges are there. Ani nga ashtu lotu tu mota ya kutu rampa kupinda mgea forward. Ii mosele muta mga kwa mofamba. Gotta still get to where you need to go, and that's what we've been talking about today with Miss Nicole Rimbo Marara, our guest of the week on Big Business Pep Talk, and she was giving us insights from her experience in how mindset in itself is important to your initiative. And we we're asking you a couple of questions, and I hope you've been reflecting on them and gaining some sort of clarity in your mind about how important business is. There are also other ways to love our natural hair. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah, there are a lot of ways we can, if we use more of the natural products or natural hair, it makes sense because now we're embracing um, our African hair. Love it, love it, love it. In your business, that positive mindset must also translate but how do you treat people and how 
your team around you also has the same confidence in you. Mm -hmm. I'll ask you as somebody who is in business. Where you get to um, a, a business and the fanciest car there belongs to one man. They're like way, 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 way below. Do you know what I mean? You see the boss driving like a GL. I'm with that my feet, Vitsi. Sitsi, like, you know, like little, little, little cars, like a huge gap. Mm -hmm. you got to ask yourself, are people at this office satisfied? Yeah. Building the positive mindset even in your team so that they can support your vision. True for like, you, you know, we always say great leaders uh, create more leaders, not followers. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about a strong mindset, uh, you know, as a way of, building your business we are not saying that you should be the only one you should be the only thinker in fact you find that the greatest and successful companies are a result of teamwork mm. so that positive mindset should not be in the leader only it should not be in one person mm -hmm. positive mindset should be a culture that's how i can put it across it should be a culture an organization wide culture which you know, resonates with everyone within the employee of that organization. And once things are like that, you know, creativity thrives and people are confident and motivated to push the vision forward. Love this. Yeah. As we are about to close the curtain of our conversation today on the Business Pep Talk, Stephen, let me start with you. If you want to get a hold of you um, as somebody who we understand as our business coach, how do we do that? I know you are present on our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, as Stephen Chikojo, as a kuna how do we get a hold of you? Uh, on the phone, zero seven seven two four zero nine six five one. It's open to calls and WhatsApp. And uh, as excited I, as I am about hair products, did I let? You, did I also tell you that Ruvimbo is also on social media as Ruvimbo Nicole Marara, Nicole Ruvimbo Marara, mm -hmm. and you can get a hold of her. And if you are loving hair products like I am, I'm looking forward. And then we must have tackled such a leave in conditioner. You've gone to school again, Jasper. Ahead, and if you want to go to me as well on your natural hair journey, 0771 um, 530 is a number to get a hold of Nicole Rovimbo Marara. And this is what we had today. What's your thoughts today as you are getting about your day? What do they say about you and the quality of solutions you have as you go through? your day. It's been Big Business Pep Talk. Shall we do this again next week, Monday? Business. Do you want to ship goods from China, Dubai, or Turkey? Your multi-award winning brand, Beyond Borders Logistics, is giving you some of the very best offers on the shipping market today. Book our China to Zimbabwe Priority Express Shipping Service and much more. Find out today how we can go above and beyond for you. Contact our teams on the China Corridor, Mandy, on plus 86-139-703825. Two six Jolene on plus eight six one three seven one nine two five eight one two five Dubai Corridor Hasil on plus nine seven one five eight one seven zero zero three three four Najad plus nine seven one five two three seven nine two three six nine Harare on zero eight six four four two nine zero zero two one or zero eight six four four eight seven eight one six four or zero seven eight three seven seven eight four four three.